Back on December 31st, before Doctor Who broke a new record in failure, Doctor Who destroyer, sorry, showrunner, Chris Chibnall tried to defend his dumpster fire known as Series 11. We discussed at length how Doctor Who gave up storytelling, at least good storytelling, so it could push a series of very misguided ideological directives. Our friend Hugh Fullerton is back, and I'm sure he'll be completely objective. That's sarcasm, in case you didn't get it. According to Fullerton, Jodie Whittaker's first series as the Doctor was accused by some of political correctness. Um, no Fullerton. It's been accused by most fans of pushing political correctness. It's not just some. And it now seems to be all the program is about. But the head writer says it's a response to the times we're living in. Spoken like a true elitist there, Chibs. Apparently the times we're living in means that white people and males are the devil. I guess, at least according to the logic of Chibs, Doctor Who boss Chris Chibnall has defended the BBC sci-fi drama's focus on social issues during the most recent series, telling fans that you want to be writing about the world that we live in. This isn't the world we live in, Chibs. This is the world as you and your elitist friends at the BBC see it. And who wants you to be writing about this in the way you do, Chibs? A very small minority. The rest of us are shaking our heads in disbelief. Some of the recent storylines, which saw new Doctor Jodie Whittaker and her TARDIS team tackle issues including racism and sexism throughout time and space has been criticized by certain viewers as too politically correct, claiming that under Chibnall's leadership, the show had a more socially progressive outlook at the expense of storytelling. Well, Fullerton, that perfectly summarizes not just how we think the show is, but how the show actually is. Racism. Well, I've said this numerous times, but Rosa, for example, turned an important historical event that highlighted racism in Montgomery, Alabama in the 1950s and turned it into racism against white people in 2018. What Chibs and Mallory Blackman did was turn an event of great historical significance into a parody. As for sexism, well, I reference the Witchfinders. If Doctor 13 really was a strong female character, then she would have accepted that context is everything. The past is not like the present, and a strong character would have sucked it up and just gotten on with it. Instead, Whitaker spends the entire episode bitching and throwing in third-wave feminist talking points. Many more fans, meanwhile, noted that Doctor Who has always been a show that examined issues of prejudice, hate, and social justice. There's some misrepresentation here, Fullerton, that demonstrates a complete misunderstanding of what Doctor Who was and how it used to deal with important issues. Doctor Who used to examine current issues through the lens of metaphorical science fiction, and when it tackled real issues, it never did so by defaming an entire group of people for no reason other than they exist and happen to be the wrong gender and skin color. In the eyes of progressives, anyway, progressives is actually a very funny term, because they're anything but. Regressive is much more fitting. While some of the series actors, including Whitaker herself and companions Tozen Cole and Mandeep Gill, argued that the storylines were an accurate reflection of modern society, Whitaker comes across as nothing more than a toxic feminist that seems to have nothing but contempt for Doctor Who's long-term fans. And white males. Cole and Gill are both very young. I definitely don't mean to put down young people. I was there once. But they don't yet have the life experience to see how the world really works. This is something that comes with age and experience. Moreover, neither of them represent the demographic group that Chibs and Doctor Who have decided to declare war on. Now Chibnall has also weighed in on the issue. Oh goody, I can't wait to hear his justification for completely destroying a 55-year-old franchise. Telling fans at a screening of the upcoming New Year's Day episode Resolution, ah yes, his record-breaking failure, that he thought touching on these topics was really important for Doctor Who. Why Chibs? I'm not necessarily talking about the issues themselves, but why did you feel the need to include them and why did you include them in the way you did? Why were they important? Other than a failed attempt at demonstrating your own sense of superiority. I think it's fundamental. Oh, do you, Chibs? Well, it's nice that you admit you destroyed Doctor Who because you think hateful ideology is fundamental. I think you want to be writing about the world that we live in. This is a science fiction fantasy show, Chibs, about a man that travels through time in a police box. This isn't Broadchurch. The show is not a standalone thing. Well, it did pretty well as a standalone thing from 1963 to, oh, about 2018. It's a response to the times that we're living in and the world we're in. Again, Chibs, this is how you see the world, but not how normal people see the world. And when it comes to things that affect people's lives, I think particularly particularly things that children and young adults are going through, that feels really important. Chibs, you completely misrepresent things. Let's talk about your apparent hatred of fathers, for example. Will you please explain to me how an episode like It Takes You Away, which was obviously approved by you, did anything to help the plight of single fathers? It doesn't. All you managed to do was vilify them. And you did the same thing again with Ryan's father in Resolution. I think the character of the Doctor and her friends as well is a great conduit into discussing all that. And then you add monsters as well, he concluded. And without knowing it, Chibs manages to summarize everything wrong with Series 11 in one sentence. You use the Doctor and her companions to push propaganda. To push the world as you see it not as regular people see it, as I keep saying. It's also funny that you threw in monsters at the end of your sentence, almost as an afterthought. The monsters are why people loved Doctor Who, not your brainwashing. The way you incorporated monsters into Series 11 is absolutely laughable. You got rid of all Doctor Who monsters until you were forced, probably by the BBC, to include a Dalek in the New Year's special. The non-human monsters that you did give us consisted of tooth monsters and talking frogs. Your villains throughout the series were nothing more than caricatures. 
of how you see white males. That is, white males that aren't you and your elitist friends. I mean, a space racist chibs? Couldn't you have at least included some backstory? Moreover, let's not forget your blatant attack on white males and Americans with stand-in Trump. Honestly, chibs, it was like this episode was written by a fifth grader, not the showrunner of Doctor Who. Fullerton concludes, so from the sounds of it, plenty more real-world issues will be tackled by the Doctor and her pals when the series returns for another run in 2020. Well, considering people are turning away from Doctor Who in droves, I don't think many people will still be watching in 2020. But I have no doubt that Chibnall and Whitaker will double and triple down on their ideological agenda-pushing crap. Guess we can start this argument all over again in a year or so. Again, Fullerton, the way the BBC chibs Whitaker and the way the mainstream media and reviewers see it, this isn't an argument. It's a lecture, and anybody that doesn't agree with any part of the lecture is written off as a sexist, racist, and or homophobic. And that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. And as always, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a great day.